Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about top 10 common mistake React programmers make. Now, React is an awesome framework and it can it will let you build beautiful application with much ease. But just like anything, if you don't use it correctly, you can make a giant mess and you can make spaghetti code in React as well. So today I'm going to discuss top 10 such mistakes you can avoid to become a better programmer of React. And so the important thing is which one of these mistakes you are making. Let's figure it out. And welcome to Texi Tutorials. Okay, so let's start with the very first mistake. And this is this is a mistake when you you make when you start building your project for the first time. When you're building your folder structure and you're organizing your files and everything, uh, there is no right way to do it. If it's working for you, then it's a good structure. That's how I look at it because there are multiple ways to do it. However, I can tell you the stuff that you're not supposed to do that would make things more painful. It will work, but it would make things more painful. The first rule of thumb is if something is only going to be used by that component or that file, then it should stay next to it. For example, if you have a CSS file that only applies to one component, then it should stay with it. Unit test. If it applies to that component, which usually is, it should stay with it, which means you have one folder with a component, its unit test, and its style. Anything that applies to multiple components should stay a little bit higher because they can access it much easily. And believe me, I've seen some messy structure where you have one page, and if the component that is used inside that page is sometime outside in some other location, okay? which is a really bad. If you have to do that, if you move stuff and stuff starts to break, then you know that you have a bad folder structure. To mitigate it, whenever you create a new project, there are multiple ways to organize your file. And you can Google it. There's like a standard uh, folder structure you can find and you can follow that. Uh, there are templates available for you. So I would always do that. So why invent the wheel, which is already invented for you. Second mistake a lot of people make is the power of React is in its components. You can componentize everything. However, a lot of people make monolithic application, which means you have one page and they put everything in that page. Or even if they have components, they are not componentized things enough. For example, when you get a design, you need to identify multiple things. You, are, you need to identify your layouts, your navigation, your lower level components, which means your like your buttons and your input boxes, uh, your checkbox and things like that. And then you need to identify your fragments. Fragments are the one that are made of multiple lower level components. And then you identify those and then you can plan accordingly saying, okay, I have this page there, these things can be reusable then create components. Ideally, you want to componentize everything. So there'll be like a one guy who knows how to write CSS and everybody else just write JavaScript. So then the one, one guy builds all the reusable component and everybody just follow. There'll be like a style guide with all the components and there will be documentation and you can, rest of the team would use it. And that is the best approach. This way you can avoid duplicate code. Your application becomes very flexible and maintainable. And that's the key word because if you have a giant monolithic application and if you say, okay, I want to change this button to from green to yellow, then if you have to dig into the code to change many different places, then you have failed to reuse the components. Also another gauge would be if you have a file that has more than 200 lines, you know you are doing something wrong. You should have some sort of gauge say, okay, I should not have more than 100 lines of code in one file. And you should create that rule for yourself. And beyond that, you should componentize. The next mistake people make is they put business logic in reusable component. Typically what you wanna do is all the business logic should go in the page not the underlying components. Most of the components should be dumb enough. You should pass something and displace that information. But if there is a business logic, it should stay outside. So if you have multiple components that are using that business logic, 
you can provide it. Also, the benefit of that is if you move, if you are using that component somewhere else with completely different business logic, then it would still work because all you care about is the visual part of it, right? And then the data should be coming from somewhere else. So this way, if you build your component as dumb as possible, you can reuse it everywhere else. Next mistake a lot of people make, and I've seen that more than enough, is using Redux to manage all the state. Whenever you have a giant project, especially for the giant project, you need to identify your data, which is coming from your REST API or whichever way you're getting it. You need to manage that through Redux or some other global state management. Let's say if you're using Redux as a global state management, then you can manage that. And you know that it is being used, the same data is being used multiple places in your pages, right? So it makes sense. However, let's say on your page, you have drop down menu. And you want to remember when you move out from the page, you want to come back, you want the same drop down selection selected. You don't want to use Redux to do that because it's a local thing. You should use something else, local state, or if you're using hooks, you can use use state to do that. You can also use context API or use context if you're using uh, hooks to manage that. The next mistake is quite powerful, not using right lifecycle method. And I've seen that more than enough. Let's say if you wanna get the data from the server, if you wanna make an API call, there are places where you can make it. There is a lifecycle method called component did mount. You can use API call to do that because this is when you know that page is loaded. But I've seen people doing it randomly in any lifecycle hook. Sometimes it may work because of the timing, but it may not work perfectly. And when it creates a problem, it's hard to debug. So I would suggest understand every single lifecycle hook and how it works and what are the things you can do. Can I create a side effect in this uh, lifecycle hook? If you can, you should not always do it because there are some lifecycle hooks that are uh, should be rarely used. And React actually s says that. But if you just use randomly, then it could create problem for you. And actually, I have a video on lifecycle hooks. Uh, if you want to check it out, I'll provide a link here. And the next mistake, and I would see, I've seen this almost 50% of the project that I've seen. If you have a large project, you have to have unit tests for your components. Why do we want to have unit tests? so you would have a less regression. If you change something, if there's a new requirement, and if you change something, you don't wanna break something that is already working. And having a lot of unit tests would let you do that. You also wanna make sure that you have enough coverage. Having few unit tests doesn't really work. You need to have a proper coverage. If you're using Jest, there's a tool that helps you, that helps you define coverage and you can see how much is covered and what are missing so you can write the rest of the unit tests. And I know, I, I, I've heard this argument uh, that, you know, why should, we, why should we write additional code? Because writing unit tests is additional work. So I don't know who, who here, uh, who, who is watching, thinks that, that they are useless, okay? I, I was in the same category maybe like six, seven years ago. Uh, I would never write unit tests. But nowadays, if I don't write unit tests, then I feel incomplete. And this is like more generic. And this is based on my experience. A lot of time when you start a project, if you don't plan your project correctly and you just start coding, and that's how a lot of people do, they just, whenever they get the project, they start building the product structure, start putting it, you know, building Redux and all that stuff without even thinking, the requirement they're looking they're without looking at the specs that that are provided if they are provided okay or building specs or whatever there should be substantial amount of work goes in planning and if you don't do that you will suffer later on so i would suggest before you start building your uh, react project plan it and the next mistake uh, this is like a much higher level when you have a giant project 
uh, at the architecture level, a lot of people don't upgrade their application with the, the latest version of React. It looks fine, let's say if you're using uh, 15.9 version of React, I'd say that wasn't a long time ago, maybe like a couple of years ago that was the case. But right now it's much higher version, even though React is pretty good framework and it's still compatible uh, with, if you upgrade it, you will have less pain because of React. If you're using Angular, then you know how much pain that is to upgrade. And I've, I've been to that kind of pain before. I would suggest frequently upgrade every six months. If you have a project, create a plan. It, it takes maybe a week, uh, if you have a giant project, of your team's time to freeze all the work and focus on upgrade and run all the tests, make sure everything is fine. So then you have the latest build. The problem is when you don't upgrade frequently, let's say all this stuff builds on and every upgrade may have some deprecation, something that used to work previously doesn't work. And if you wait, you have a bunch of other stuff also breaking. You may end up touching every single file if you, if you don't upgrade for a long time. And I know those who have upgraded knows the feeling. And if you haven't, just take, take my word for it. I think I said 10, top 10, but I think I only covered nine. So, or maybe eight, I don't know. I didn't keep track of it. But anyway, I wanted to add this one um, because I've seen this causing an issue. And this is a coding level React mistake using incorrect prop types. What does it really mean? So for example, if you have a component and if you want to pass let's say a number. A lot of people just use string to do that. I would suggest use a proper prop types, otherwise it would create problem. This way you're passing number and the first way you're actually passing number as a string. Okay, and this could actually create a lot of problem if you are doing calculation inside the component. So that's all folks. Uh, if I miss something that you think is a mistake, feel free to send, send me a message or comment here. Uh, so, you know, I can include in the next video because I'm sure there are tons of stuff that you probably learned as a React developer that you think they're annoying and people are making those mistakes over and over and then you're pay, paying the price. So please do communicate, let me know. And I hope you learned, uh, and I hope you learned something from this video and if you did, please like, subscribe and provide a nice comment. You can follow me on Facebook. I have multiple groups that would help you solve your problems. Uh, so here's a link. You can help me on Patreon or you can purchase the merchandise on Teespring. And here's a link. Also, I have a Udemy course on JavaScript and I'm preparing a React course. So by the time you watch this video, I may have that course. I'm planning to release maybe in a, a couple of weeks after releasing this video. So check it out. And you can also translate this video for me. And the information is in the description. And thank you.